What's happening, my YouTube family? I am excited about the series for the month of June. It is entitled God of a Breakthrough. Where do we get that from? It is what God gave us for 12 hour prayer. So we're gonna teach on that. Breakthrough in your finances, breakthrough in your family, breakthrough in your spirit, breakthrough in your home. What area do you need a breakthrough in? And we're gonna make sure that we give you the scriptures to make sure you get that breakthrough. Why? Because he's the God of a breakthrough. Come on, you two, let's do this. So today, like, I could teach this because I lived it. And one of the things that I'm a firm believer is, I just refuse to believe that we are supposed to be this saved, this sanctified, and we sweat, run, you lose your hair, your eyelashes, and then struggle. You cannot tell me that it is his will that I struggle. You got, you got to hear me. And he says clearly, you're the head. You're not the tail. Here's the line. You are the lender. You are not the borrower. And you, you, you trust God for all this deliverance, but we don't trust God to deliver us out of poverty or to deliver you from struggling. Listen to me, I'm a firm believer that everybody has to have a struggling season so that you can be compassionate on those that come to you that don't have. You need to know what that feels like. Come on here. Is there anybody that know what it looked like? I know what it looked like, what it tastes like, and what it feels like. I know it because I grew up in it. I know what it was not to have enough shoes. I know what it was to have a hole in your shoe and they put a piece of cardboard in there. I know what it is to walk in the rain and you can feel that puddle in your shoes. I know what it is. Y'all get to go to McDonald's and have a Happy Meal. You know what a Happy Meal was for us? A mayonnaise sandwich. We had fried bologna. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me? That you had to cut with that red tape around it. Throw it in the skillet, let it bubble and We took cornbread and put it in buttermilk. Buttermilk is so bitter. No, but we got sugar. Sprinkle that sugar on there and tell God it's good. Look here. We had sardines with crackers. Listen, look at me. When they were going through the wilderness, he gave them manna every day. He said, every day you get up, it'll be fresh manna. You won't have enough manna for the next day. So I need you to know what it is to live from check to check, from check to check, from check to check. But when you get to your Canaan, the Bible says, and the manna ceased. Now you get to eat and drink off the fruit of the... It is a land that flows. Everybody say, it flows. Come on here, nudge your neighbor and say, your money is about to flow. Your finances are about to flow. Your business is about to flow. Your minute, you, you don't live in the wilderness, you live in Canaan. So I, I had to make up my mind because I struggled. I struggled being a part of the church and seeing people struggling living. And I used to say to God, you can't tell me you prejudice. You cannot tell me that other races and other people can are the only ones that can have stuff this nice. He told me very loud and clear, I am not, but can I trust you? If I bring you out, can I be glorified? If I bring you out, will you give me the credit for blessing you with everything you have? Because everything you get, it's going to come from me. You can't get arrogant. You can't get stuck up. You can't look down on nobody and think that you're better than anybody. If it weren't for the grace and the mercy of God, it is his will. Can I show you something that blew my mind and I need you to read? I'm going to read. I want you to read it for yourself. Look at the screen. There are 500 Bible verses pertaining to the topics of faith and prayer. And we got so much faith that we got prayer meetings. But there are 2,350 Bible verses relating to your finances. Why is that? Because God knows that our attitude toward money is an indication of where our heart is with God. Money is not my God. God. He is my Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. You will either follow after gold or God. No, I follow after the God that will give me the gold. 
Javon had this scripture earlier, where your, where your treasure is, is where you Let me show you just five verses that it talks about when it comes to money in the Bible. Just look at these. You should take your phone out and take a picture of this, because some of y'all need to read this for yourselves. Proverbs 21 and 20, a wise man, everybody say, I have a stacking anointing. You have to learn how to save your money. If you go back and listen to my Saturday night devotion, I could tell you how I learned to save. I was not a saver, but I had to seek wisdom on how to save. Proverbs 13 and 11, money little by little. In other words, there's a process that you have to go to till you get to your wealth. But you can't stop letting your money grow. Deuteronomy 8 and 18, ability to produce wealth. Hear me clearly, I never took a finance class. I don't have a degree in business. Bible, in all of your ways, acknowledge him. Stop listening to people. He preached in that prosperity gospel. Let me tell you something. In all my ways, I acknowledge him. It's easy for you to say, you, know, you shouldn't be preaching about money. You got money. But if I need it, show me how to get it so that I don't have to keep coming back to you, asking you, can you give me $5? Did it around 12 and 10 and 22? The blessings of the Lord. Everybody say the blessings, which means that you'll have multiple streams. Money, wealth will be coming in different directions. And here's mine. Proverbs 10 and 4. Diligent hands. We busy. He's not blessing lazy people. Every disciple he picked was doing something. You didn't sit up and say, use me, Lord. Well, what, what are you doing now? <laughs> Ain't nobody saying nothing. Finances can be a blessing or a curse. Here's the line I want everybody to get me. If you don't get yours and you want it, if you don't do it God's way, you're going to figure out a way to make it happen. But the way you're going to figure it out is not going to be good. You're going to get that money even if you got to sleep with somebody. You're going to get that money even if you have to do illegal activity. You're going to get that money if you got to lie still, if you got to go get a PPP loan and know you ain't got a business nowhere. Look what he, look what he told Cain. Look what he told Cain. You got to see this one. Because Cain was jealous of Abel because Abel, Abel is a baller, shot caller. Cain looking at him and became intimidated, got jealous. Look what he said to him in Genesis 4 and 7. If you just do what is right, you will, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, if you don't handle your business, handle your money right, watch me, sin is crouching at your door. And it desires to have you, but you got to control this. Do not lie to me. If you're in this building and you need a financial breakthrough, you know that you should be, what's me? If you're living from check to check, you need a breakthrough. Stop. If you two check short, for having to get on aid, you need a breakthrough. Don't sit here and act like you're a baller. If you know you need a miracle in your finances, I ain't talking about your body right now. I'm talking about in your pocket. Just slip your hand up like this. Don't play with me. Don't play with me. I got a couple of thousand in the bank. That ain't no money. I got about 10. That ain't no money. I need you to make sure you sit in an honest section. Because he says, I am going to give you exactly what I heard you say. I need you to make sure that you in the section that live in overflow. I need you to make sure that you're in the section that's sitting under heaven. And he say, I'm going to rip heaven open and descend on you. I need you to turn around and tell three people, my best days are ahead of me. Oh, 
all my needs are about to be met. My struggling days are over. My address is about to change. Now listen, listen to the Bible. He wants to perfect those things that concern you. He wants to fix it for you. He wants to make sure that you're not sitting up at night worried about how your bills are going to be paid. He wants to make sure that your kids are well taken He wants to make sure you're the curse breaker. He want to make sure your kids never lack like you. I feel the anointing already up in here. Listen to me. For anyone that raised your hand, your breakthrough is bigger than you. I know you need, I know you need money, but it's bigger than you. I, I prayed the, the weirdest prayer, and I waited too late to pray it. If you're in your 20s and early 30s, if you get this prayer now, it'll set you up. We don't know what to pray for as we are. So the Spirit began to teach me, because nobody taught me this. Nobody taught me this every day. I was in church one day. I said, God, I need you to allow me to be the number one tither in your house. Not only make me the number one tither, whatever the kingdom needs, Whatever the kingdom need, can you flow the finances through me? Let me be the answer to somebody's prayer. That if they praying that they need a financial breakthrough, you could trust me with the breakthrough in my hand and I'll walk it over to them and drop it off on them and say, hey, God has heard your prayer. Those of y'all that want God to bless you, this ain't about your light bill, your gas bill, your tuition, your debt. No, no. Let it flow through me. Lift your hands. Close your eyes. Tell God, get the glory out of my finances. Now we're about to go deep. In the world, they gamble. In the world, they steal, they kill. We're spiritual. We are spiritual people. And everything about us is spiritual. It's not common sense. It don't make sense. It doesn't make sense. So I want to show you what Christ is about to give, take them through a process to show them how to get it. Remember, Christ only comes where there's a need. And if he's going to get your, this glory, he's going to send you where there's a need. Everybody do me a favor. I know some of y'all, you don't carry cash. Can you look in your pocket? If you got one dollar, can you take it out? If you got a quarter, can you take it out? If you got a little change, look at the millennials. They ain't got nothing but their cards. They got their debit card. They got their cell phone. Look at Will up here shaking his phone. I need you to have some tangible money. Look over there. Pastor Reed got some money. Actually, give me a dollar. Just one dollar. Or a quarter, a dime. Get some change. You got it? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Look at it. Money cometh. Oh, no, no. They, they ain't go. Thank you. Is that my father's day gift? God bless you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Happy Sunday. I've been knowing Terrence since he was 16 years old. I raised that boy right there. I'm that baby baby. Listen. So hold it, hold it in your hand. So I'm going to show you what Christ walks up on a need. In Mark 6 and 30, when Jesus, had, when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them. Saints of God, if I ever beg you to do something, never lose your compassion. Don't become so cold that you can't feel people. Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. 
So he began to teach them many things. By this time, it was late in the day. Jesus was long-winded. He was like a regular preacher. He gave the benediction three times. So his disciples came to him. This is a remote place. And it is already late. And then we get to introduce to the need. Everybody repeat after me. God is about to put me in the middle of a need. Say it again. Now watch the need. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and the villages because they got Harold's Chicken, Uncle Remus, Popeyes, and McDonald's out there. There is no place, no 7-Eleven to get nothing from out here. Send them away from us. Get the need away from us. But he answered, no, we're not going to send them away. We're going to meet the need right here. Hmm. Come on here. You give them something to eat. Don't send them to the government. Don't send them to the store. I got them in your presence right now because they need to know that I am Jehovah Jireh. Come on here. Lift your hands with that lacina. Say, use me, Lord. They said to him in a carnal manner, that would take more than half of a year's wages. Are we going to spend that much on bread to give it to them? In other words, we ain't got that. And the need is screaming. What, it, what, what, is it, what do you mean? We got the people. That's a, that's a sign that a miracle take, can take place. It's late. The stores are closed. That's a sign that a miracle could take place. I hear they grumbling. Their stomachs are sounding real loud. As a matter of fact, I'm hungry too. <laughs> Don't just feed them, feed me too. Come on here. It's, it's a setup for a miracle. The disciples tried to push the miracle out of the way so that they wouldn't have to deal with it because they kept looking in the natural. But I came to tell you that my God will supply all your needs. And it ain't just my need. It's the need in front of me. I need you to prove to them that you're God. I need you to prove to them that you are very present help in a time. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. You got the need. Now you got the seed. You got the seed. Jesus said, I want to highlight the seed. How many loaves do you have? Go and see. That line blessed me. Who did they have to go see? Look at me. The only one that tells us where they got the loaves from was John. John said, there's a lad in the crowd. There's somebody who don't have a title. There's somebody that don't have a position. There's somebody that don't even have that much education yet, but they have what we need. Some of y'all keep looking for millionaires. You keep looking for people that look like they got it all. Question me, you keep looking for somebody older. You plan the blessing that sit next to you. They don't look like they got it, but they got the oil. Come on here. Come on here. They ain't got on no clergy collar. Some of them look, look a little hood, but that's the one you look at. They, they younger than you, but the God still got them. Touch your neighbor and say, it's on you. Okay. When they found out, they said, this ain't enough. We got five barley loaves and another translation and two small fish. Everybody lifted up and said, this, this ain't enough. 
It's not enough based upon what you do with it. It's not enough if you keep holding it. As a matter of fact, if you go buy yourself something with this, then you'll be satisfied, but, every, but the, the need will still be there. But I only send you where there is a need. And you keep looking at what you have saying, it's not enough. But everybody look at me. Hold it up in your hand and say, such as I have, give I thee. Now, I want, I want to show you the scripture. I want you to go to the scripture in 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. Now, he who supplies seed, he only gives seed. If I gave you this, I'm only giving you this not to hold it, but to release it. Uh uh, wait, wait, wait. And bread for food will supply. It's gonna supply and do what? Increase your store of seed and will enlarge. So, what you holding, it can increase or enlarge as long as you hold it. Everybody, do me a favor pass the seed. Let it go. Oh, wait. While you let it go under this hand, open the other hand. Pass the seed if you want to. 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 Everybody freeze! Everybody freeze. Some of y'all still like, I ain't got no seed yet. He might not come. When you want him. But look, you pass one seed and you got three. Pass the seed if you want to. Pass the seed if you want to. Pass the seed if you want to. Hold on, wait. Some of y'all are sitting in the section and you release the seed, but ain't nothing coming your way. That means you around takers. And you might need to reposition yourself. Pass the seed if you want to. Pass the seed if you want to. Pass the seed. Freeze. I just saw somebody in the back have to get up and walk across the aisle to go get a seat. And some of y'all, you might have to walk, you ain't gotta walk far, but I'm gonna need you to get your behind up and go get your seat. Hold the seat. Hold the seat. Hold the seat. Hold the seat. But stay right there. Hold the seat. But stay right there. Hold the seat, so long. But stay right there. Because some of y'all, you keep looking at your little seat. Your little seat. So what do you expect to come out of that? Look at me. Expect nothing if you keep holding it. Wait, stay close, watch this. You have to stay in the position of a servant. A servant doesn't serve with a closed hand, but a servant sews with an open hand. And some of y'all, your, your hand has been closed because you're too busy holding on to that little dollar. And that little dollar ain't gonna get you nothing. But the moment that you, so what does this turn to? Allow me to show you, if you release it, let me show you what it grows to. Allow me to show you how your income is about to go. Allow me to show you how your resume is about to go. Allow me to show you how your name is about to grow. Allow me to show you how your influence is about to grow. Allow me to show you how your passport is about to be stamped and stamped 
and stamp because your seeds go international. Ah! Do me a favor. Don't throw the money. We're not going to make it rain. But I need you to take a, a, this is a prophetic gesture. Take your hand and just throw it like that. If you, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me help you. If you did this, if you went, don't you expect much. But if you went, hold on, wait a minute. Ah! I need God to look at your gesture and let your blessing match your gesture. On the count of three, release your seed. Go! Have a seat. Have a seat. So, you got a need? You have the seed. Now we need you to do is do the deed. And when you do the deed, so when he put a seed in your hand, so how do you, how do you make sure you get increase? You got you to gotta release it. And I want you, Jesus now shows us how to handle little. You got to see this. So they give it to Jesus, and I want you to watch this. You got to get the revelation. You ready? Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. You will never see what he said. Now, God, I need you to increase this. I need you, God, to multiply it. He never, never prayed for increase. But what he did was he held what was in his hand, and he started giving thanks to God. And the Lord told me to tell some of y'all, you so busy complaining when all I'm waiting on you to give me thanks. There's no way I can increase your seed, and you're not giving me glory. Can I tell you something? There's somebody that don't even have what you have in your hand. So before you pass the seed, I'm going, to need you, I'm going to need you to get ready to give God a thank you for what you already have. Look at me. I don't care if you got a link card. You better go in. I don't care if you don't have any money. Because some of y'all, when we were passing, nothing hit you yet. But what have I told you? Your praise, your thank you would make it come in your direction. Ah, can I, I, I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. It's a process. And God said, I need, every now and then, you got to stop and thank me for what I've already done. You started out with nothing, but now you got two fish and five loaves. You got more than you had at the beginning of this story. It don't look like enough, but if you thank me, I increase what you already have. There's some of y'all, you're behind on your thank you. Your complaints are outrunning your thank you, but your praise is going to push Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for he is good. Oh, give thanks. Some of y'all ain't saying nothing. Hold on. You could be in a shelter. You could be in the streets. You could be on it. You might not like the job you got. But at least you got some form of income coming in your house. I need you to make sure you sit next to a thankful person. Tell your neighbor, hey, we about to release a thank you up in here. 
because it could have been me outdoors with no food, no clothes, or just another number with a tragic end. But you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. But every day, you keep on blessing me. What am I going to say? On the count of three, release your thank you phrase. One, two, three, go. Come on. Everybody that's struggling, give God a praise. Every business owner, every college student, every single parent, come on on your way to your seat, tell somebody, God's been good to me. back in your spot because you got to pass. You got to release that. You got to get the... I just wanted to see if you were going to praise me for what you had. Now I need you to pass it. Don't get stuck in the praise and think that's all you got. See, the worst thing that you could do is First thing you can say, is this all you got for me? I mean, this all you got for me? No, no. I started out with nothing. I got a little something. Thank you. Now, you got to be careful that you don't get so caught up in your praise because you're caught up and make you think, this is it. This ain't it. He had to release it. Everybody say, I'm going to need you to let that go. Bible says, and he gave. So when he was thinking he was breaking, 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 the more he think, the more he broke. The more he think he was breaking, the more he think he was breaking, the more he think he was breaking. It's, it's, a, it's just like you start thinking God and he start just cutting it up and letting it go further. It's a, it's a, how do you explain that? I know my money didn't increase. I add my bills up, and my bills don't match my check stuff. <laughs> but somehow this thing came together for me. I, 
Because while I was thinking, I was breaking. While I was thinking, I was... Is there anybody that had a think and a break? He gave you a break in your think? And then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. And then he also divided the two fish among them. Do me a favor. Pass the seed if you want to. 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 Pass the seed if you want. To. Let it go. Pass the seed. Let it go. Pass the seed. Release it. Release it. Hold it. Hold on. Watch me. He told Peter, you ain't caught no fish? Release the net. He told the widow, they said, How much, what you got in your house? I ain't got nothing but a little oil. She said, pour it. And watch it keep increasing. He told another widow, I'm just going to eat this meal and me and my son are going to die. Feed me first and watch I hook you up. But I can't do it until you release it. Pass the seed if you want to. Pass the Come on, Lala. Pass the seed if you want to. Some of y'all need to get up and pass it. Pass it. The more effort you do to release the seed. God bless you. Is this for the house or is this for me? Mother, mother, mother. Is this for me to pass on? Okay then. I will. This ain't mine. You want me to say freeze? Look at how much she gave me. You want me to say freeze? <laughs> you better hurry up before I say freeze. Freeze! Freeze! I need you to ask somebody next to you. Did something come back to you? Now ask them, did you get more? Than, those of you all that got something, and some of y'all got more than what you started. Because I told y'all to get $1 out of it. One lady came up here and said, this is a pass seat. That was $20. If you got more than what you started with, or you got something in your hand, can you release the praise right here? Go! Look at the praise. Is that crazy? Everybody stand. <laughs> so you have a need, then you get a seed. Now you have to do the deed. And the deed, you got to thank him. Then you got to release it. And then you got to monitor it. What do you mean? I need you to hear me. God will get you a, to a place that you don't hunger for it anymore. You got to hear me now. I need you to hear me. So, though, money can't always be my issue. I can't wake up every month scared to see bills. I live to be a blessing. Here's the line that messed me up when you monitor it. Because I need you to check out your circle. Because if you're always around needy people, that means that they're not passers. The Bible says they all ate and were satisfied. Which means that when you saw things working, everything began to settle everybody. And some of you all, you're in a circle. They keep taking 
but they're not passing. So they're never satisfied. That's to come every month, the rent is due, and they keep coming and asking you, and then they use manipulation and control and witchcraft and make you question if you are generous and make you, make you feel like you're selfish. No, boo, you're not good soil. Because good soil gets satisfied. And they were satisfied. Here's the line. I need you to get it. Because if you keep doing this, you're not going to live on that bag. You're about to live on the basket. Let's, let's do it. And he says, and the disciples, because you're not going to waste your money. This is the stacking anointing. And they picked up. Some of y'all are going to have to go by all your buildings and pick up your rent. <laughs> go by all your shops and get your stuff. And picked up 12 baskets of broken pieces of bread and fish. How do you start with two fish and five barley loaves and you end with 12 baskets full and everybody's satisfied? So what's the 12 baskets for? The next time you get hungry, you ain't going to have to be in this situation again. You'll never have to wait on nobody else to feed you. As a matter of fact, 12... Get the 12 and start your business. Sell fish sandwiches. So let's go. Let's go. So look at me. I'm going to read this scripture to you, and this is one that helped me. You got to hear me. It's not his will. You got to hear me clearly. It is not his will that you struggle. I know this scripture, the poor you have with you always. Your name is not on that scripture. That's whoever want to put their stuff in that scripture. But I, I'm the one that's going to help the poor. I'm not going to be the poor. I want to show you the scripture. Let's go. You got, but remember this. If you give little, you will get little. A farmer who plants just a few seeds will get only a small crop. Okay, let me sit right there. Look at me. Nobody told me this. And there's a part of me that was reluctant to teach it because we think that preachers should just live in sackcloth and ashes. It's amazing how y'all let the rappers get up. Y'all even let the gospel singers show you all their stuff. And y'all about to take it. But the preacher got to walk around like, oh, it's me. How can I preach to somebody? Look, look, okay. I remember asking God, shift me, shift me. Then he started putting a demand on me. Then start releasing more. I start tithing, and then I start going above my tithes. I need you to hear me. I started at one point tithing $5,000 a month, and I wasn't making 50 grand. What? But where did you get the 5000 from? It was a trust seed. Can I trust you to release it? Because if you release 5,000, I'll get you to the place that you'll have to release 10. Because if you sow a little, you get a little. So let me stretch you. And while I'm stretching you, you're satisfied. You're good. Let's go. Everyone must make up his own mind as to how much he should give. I cancel manipulation and witchcraft that the churches have made you feel guilty, shame, embarrassed because you didn't buy stuff. 
It's the pastor's anniversary. Everybody get a thousand dollars in a thousand dollars. And if you don't give it, you're gonna be cursed. Oh, that ain't God. Everyone must make up his own mind as to how much he should give. Don't force anyone to give more than he really wants to. For a cheerful givers are the ones God... Pr- so even if, you, if all you have is a dollar and you give it with a smile on your face, he gave you the seed. What do you mean? He knows what you have because he gave it to you. But you got to give it like it's when the widow's mic came. They didn't say, don't give it. No, let her give. Because you're going to see her give this little, but she don't know what she's going to have to walk back to. God is able. He's able to make it up to you. By giving you everything you need. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. This is Bible. Turn and tell somebody, God's about to give you everything you need. Come on, I need you to say that. God's about to give you everything you need. Say, but hey, he's not done yet. Don't close your hand yet. And more. So that there will not be only enough for your own needs, but I'm going to make sure you could keep sowing. But plenty left to give joyfully. Look at me, because can't nobody take advantage of you. If I give you something, you just set me up for another breakthrough. Listen. I know we shout all the time, y'all roll in the flow, speak in tongues, but when you get up, you broke. Because nobody taught you. You got to hear me. You got to hear me. Look at me. Nobody taught me this. Nobody took their time to tell me, John, release but save. Release but save. I started saving $25 a pay period. Then I went from $25 to $50 a pay period. Then I went from $50 to $75, from $75 to $100. And I was sent it to a bank that I couldn't get to. And I didn't get a debit card because I just needed it to grow. When I, when, watch me, but I kept sewing and I kept tithing, but I kept growing. I kept sewing and I kept tithing, but I kept growing. I kept sewing. And then, finally, we get a call. There's a condo for sale. I couldn't afford the condo if I had not He's not going to send you your blessing until you're ready for it. Why would I bring your blessing to you and you didn't hold on to what I gave you? So when the condo became available in High Park, it was for $80,000. We bought it. We lived there. How long we lived there, Anna? In Elm 55. How long did we live there? Seven? Look at God. Seven is what? Complete. I get the condo. And the door said, now it's time to move. I said, okay, call my boy Rob. We went looking. I walked into a penthouse, 3,000 square feet, five bedrooms, three bathrooms, view of the skyline, two private decks. I walk around like MTV Cribs. <laughs> this is amazing. And then I start saying, I can't afford it. And the say, the richest say, just make an offer. I said, okay. I put it off on the table. I, I just figured, this is really low. Even my realtor said, this doesn't make sense. I said, I know. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, what's about to happen to you is not about to make sense. But it's going to be your miracle, your sign, and your wonder. Only ones that can give God a praise are those that have a spirit of expectation. (laughs) 
Everybody lean in. Lean in. Lean in. We get, we get the penthouse. And I'm in there like, are you kidding? I am from the projects. 1242 West 13th Street. Telephone number 312 421 both of my parents are high school dropouts, and I'm sitting up in a penthouse. Where we're moving on up, moving on up to a deluxe apartment. <laughs> Everybody, listen. I need you to pay close attention. Every place you move to is not for you to stay in for life. Some spots are for you to get your wealth and move on. Keep your furniture on wheels. Here, here it is again. I'm in the house, and the Holy Ghost say, move. It's time. I said, whoa, it's time to go? And my wife trusts me. I go search out the land, find it, and then bring her to it. Because she know I'm going to take care of her. Tell me, I don't be going nowhere without me. Shut your mouth. Go, boo, go. In Jesus' name. Come back and get me now. I, I, that is where my wealth came from. That is where my bundle came from. Because while I'm still doing that, I'm tithing, giving, stacking, tithing, giving, stack, tithing, giving, stack, tithing, giving, stack. And so when the big money come in, I just put it in there with that. Boom. Shut up. Then the real estate market crash. I got all this money. And the Lord said to me, I'm going to bring the economy down for you all to get on. And then I'm going to shoot it back up. Touch your neighbor and say, don't miss your ride. Don't miss your ride. Prepare to be sick of me. Prepare to be sick. Watch this, watch this. So when the real estate market crash, I got this money. Don't say, now the earth will yield what belong to you. I went, about, I went about one condo. They paid 350000 for it. I paid $50,000 cash. I went and got another condo. They paid three sixty dollars for it. I paid forty five. dollars I went and bought another condo. I think I paid about sixty. dollars I went and bought another condo. I think I paid about forty five. dollars I bought five condos. I put renters in each of those. So now I'm sitting back, tithing and giving. Five checks. Five checks. Five checks. Then he started inviting me to go preach different places. Oh my God, they don't even know me, but favors on my name. Then my tithes started increasing, and then money started coming. I need to prophesy. There's about to be a tsunami of blessings. And when the tsunami comes, you can't stand still. You got to give in to the... I need some of y'all that are ready for God to take you over. Lift your hands and worship. Haramashi. Jabari, what is that song you sing? And he say, and he, and he won't stop and he never will. What is that song? What's that song? And he won't stop and he never, is he here? I can't see in the dark. He in, get, how you coming? Oh, see, be y'all so ready. Look, so listen to me, listen to me. Look, all right, listen, everybody look here. You cannot be in this house and the oil not get on you. If you study the scripture, the scripture says that it comes from the head, from the beard, and then it goes down. Why would God put you in a church that we pay cash for everything? Why would God put you into a church that after one year it became a million dollar ministry? In the hood.
Why would God put you in a church that has a stacking anointing and a cash anointing? Why would God put you under a shepherd who God brought out of poverty, put you over these people to teach them and, and it not get on you. Look at me. Look at me. You're looking at a man that I pray crazy prayers. I pray this prayer. God, I don't want to owe anyone. I don't want to live in a house for 20 years and be paying on it. Give me wisdom on how to pay this house off. Can I tell you something? He gave me wisdom that the house is paid off. I need you to touch him and say, 100% debt free is in this house. Touch them and say, there's a cash anointing in this house and it's about to get on you. I need to hear this song. You gotta pull the words up, I get it. It's okay, you sing it before. Didn't we sing it before? And you never will. What's that song? I don't know the song. Huh? What's, is that the name of it? Okay, then sing it. And he never will. Let's go. Sing it. I don't know the song. I just know that word. And that's what I hear right now. It's, it's called, he never lost a battle. So whatever you've been fighting against, he's about to win it for you. He's about to perfect those things that concerneth you. Y'all ready? <laughs> Pull the words up on your phone, I don't care. <laughs> and he never will, he never will. See, and he never will, he never will. See, and he never with the words in the man ear while he's saying this. <laughs> he come out here with that, yeah. Yeah. He never will. He never will. Ready? Come on. Who are you, great mountain? There you go. You should not bow low. Come on, Tamar. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost. Come on out. A battle. Who are you? Who are you, great mountain? You should not bow low. Not bow low. Oh. Jesus defeated the curse. He, he has never lost. lost. Look at me, look at me. He never will, he never will. And he never will, he never will. 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 Who are you, great mountain? Who are you, great mountain? You should not bow low. Jesus defeated the dark. Has never lost a battle. Sometimes. He never will, he never will. Oh, Everybody say, He never will, he never will. 
All right, you ready? I got a few minutes. There's several of you that he, the next six months is about to be major for you. I mean, major. To the point that you gotta keep the flow. You can't not, you're gonna have to sow like you've never sown. Some of y'all are not tithers. See, I don't even argue that because that, that I don't even, I used to be one of those people that didn't believe in it. And as long as I wasn't doing it, I was struggling. The moment I made up my mind, this ain't mine. And I got it off of me. You can't talk me out of it. I don't even want to argue with you because I know how it worked for me. You do you. But I'm telling you, if you do what he say do, it'll blow your mind. So tithing is 10%. So how can I trust you with a thousand dollar tithe? And I can't even trust you with a hundred. I give you 500, you won't even give me 50. I am going to tell you something that messed me up. Because the Lord just tell me, just keep giving. Last year, blew me away. He never had me to go pull my records. That the Lord literally let me sow in the house and outside the house over $100,000. Don't clap, wait, because I'm still dizzy. Who am I? that he could channel this kind of money through me. That a kid is in college crying, not knowing how he's gonna pay his tuition and God say, you go pay it. Who am I? That a single mother is at home crying with three kids. And the Lord say, you go and hand her $10,000 and tell her I have seen her tears and I have heard her prayers. Who am I that he would tell me to buy someone a car? Who am I? At one point when I got these condos, he said, don't put any tenants in it. I'm gonna point out three people, let them live there for, for a whole year. Tell them I said, stack their money for their next blessing. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I to call five young men to my house and let them walk out with thousands of dollars worth of clothes that they've never had before? Who am I? An open vessel that only want God to get the glory out of my life. Those of you that want God to get the glory, but you seem to be just a little stuck, get out of your seat. I'm going to give you a minute on the altar. Come up close. Get out of your seat. He is my faithful father. Come on, bro. Calling me out of the dark. That's it. I can now whisper away what he said in the light. <laughs> He is my firm foundation, my anchor on the moon. Storms make a lie, but my soul is on fire with this word. Winds into the sound, the power of my lips. The power of my lips. Jesus is broken. Broken the curse. He has never lost a battle. Who are you, great mountain? Who are you, great mountain? You should not bow low. That you cannot bow down. Jesus feed the dogs. He has never lost a battle. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. And he never will. He never will. Lift your hands. Never will, never will. And he never will, never will. I want to say this for the music. I begin to pray that God will send millionaires to this church so that we could advance the kingdom. 
not for me, it's for the kingdom. And I heard the Lord say to me, they're already there. I want y'all to look at me. I started looking like this. What is it? And he told me, you're in seed form. And that the house would have the privilege of watching you grow. Nothing will be able to stop you but you. If you let God flow through you, he going to blow your mind. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard how he's about to rip open heaven. Your name is about to be brought up. Doors are about to open for you. Opportunities are about to be presented to you. And it's bigger than you. So you're going to open your eyes. You're going to look at these words on the screen. And when it gets to that mountain, that mountain is all your financial needs. All the debt that you're in. Everything is about to bow down to your God. I need some of y'all to begin to pray that he will show you how to pay your house off because he wants you to be 100% debt free. Your job is not your source. Your job is not your source. God is your provider. Open your eyes. You're going to sing these words on this screen. Let's go. Listen to the sound of power on my lips. Jesus has broken the curse of poverty. He has never lost a battle. So who are you, great mountain? You should not bow low. Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. So who are you, gray mountain? Say it. You should not bow low. Your gift is about to make room for you. Jesus defeated. Come on, say it. He has never lost. that you're open to God tell the Lord I'm open to you I'm open I'm open you could flow through me you could break generational curses bloodline curses break the spirit of poverty come on 
come on every business owner everyone that is 35 and younger I need you to get it sooner than what I got it but I need you to be open to the Lord right now worship God for what's coming your way you release a praise and I want your praise to match your expectation but I hear the Lord telling me take it down just a little bit for some of you I hear the Lord say I've given you abundance and you didn't handle it right like I've put it in your hand but you didn't do right by it I hear the Lord say you need to make me a vow that if I do it again we'll never be back here again we'll never be back here again can I give you Bible? Listen, the Bible says it's better not to make a vow than to make it and break it. If you tell God, channel it through me, it's going to blow your mind who he told you to bless. But you got to release the seed because what's coming your way is about to be a record-breaking year. This is crazy how God is talking to us. This is about to be your record-breaking year because he's the God of a breakthrough. Those of you that are 35 and younger, I'm going to need your praise to be on 10 because I want you to get it sooner than I got it. I want you to own property. I want you to sell it. I want you to get your money up. I want you to let God use you to be a sponsor for kingdom. Let's prophesy for a few minutes. Turn and tell someone this is about to be my record-breaking year. Turn and tell someone my finances are about to take off. Tell someone my seeds are about to increase. Come on, tell someone favor is on my name. Tell someone my name is about to be brought up. On the count of three, your praise is on you based upon your expectation. Keith, I believe in you. I believe in you. Solo, I believe in you. I believe in you, Will. I believe in you. On the count of three, let your praise match your expectation. One, two, three, go.
in well doing in due season you are going to reap if you faint not eyes have not seen on your way back to your seat tell them the curse has been broken right here in the blue shake my hand step up step up shake my hand same God same God be on you my sister favor is on your life that is why the warfare has been so great because the enemy wants to kill the seed in the ground but I'm telling you your future is bigger than your present I am begging you to live live you gotta let God know that you're gonna be faithful you'll see a little increase and when you get a little increase don't get beside yourself and think that you've arrived because that is nothing compared to what he has for you I want you, everyone stand take the music down a little bit I don't want you to want my stuff but don't want my God you can't have my stuff without having my God because seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all this other stuff is just some of the benefits but the biggest benefit is having God in your life I couldn't imagine going through this life without God I don't know how you're doing it and there's somebody under the sound of my voice you've been trying to do this thing called life without God but God say today is the day when you invite me in I will unlock the treasures that have already been inside of you. There are seven people in this building right now. There's some of you, there's about three of you all that are already saved, but you've been reluctant to get connected. Today is your day. Don't make me beg you for your next. If you know that I'm talking to you, get out of your seat and walk towards me like a rush. I mean like a rush. Like it's an emergency. It's a rush. 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 It's a 911 situation. Get out of your seat and come now. Move. Move. 
out of your seat and come now. I'll count down. I hear there are two more people that are supposed to be up here. Ten, nine, eight, seven. There you go. Six, five, four, three, there you go they're still coming they're still coming they're still coming they're still coming come broken before the Lord God got you God got you we're going to take you in the back we're going to get some information we're going to pray with you then next week when you come, you bring somebody because you want them to eat the same bread and the same fish that you got to eat from. Do me a favor. Can you turn around and you're going to follow this gentleman right here. As you can have a seat. Give God a hand. Praise for souls. Have a seat for one minute. I have you out in five. Keeps on making ways out of nowhere. That's what he does. He keeps on making ways out of nowhere. Keeps on making ways out of nowhere. Look at somebody say, He's about to enlarge my territory. Making waves out of nowhere. Those of y'all that are ready to move, can you say he's about to change my address? He keeps on making waves. Those of y'all that are ready for God to give you another job with better pay, to open up, say my status is changing. He keeps on making waves. We need them. We need them benefits. I don't know. Hold on, let me hurry up through this. Because my wife over here talking about my stat. Uh uh, you're going to stay right there at Northwestern. They got good benefits. Stay right there. I'm going to take care of you. You get, them, you get that insurance. <laughs> you ain't leaving Northwestern. I, I bring you lunch. Listen, I want to do this. Some of y'all, I need you to get back committed to your tithing. You fell off. I don't even have to point you out, but you got to hear the word of the Lord. And this is not about your money. This is about your future. This is about you being used for the Lord. This is about you advancing the kingdom. Um, get back on your square. Some of y'all have never tithed. <laughs> Try it. Don't tithe one time and like, it did nothing happen. <laughs> you don't water that seed. Um, but everyone else, it's two seeds. I want you to give an offering. And I want this to be your breakthrough seed. It's a $52 seed. I'm going to do that. 52 It's a breakthrough seed. Pastor Jerome spoke that earlier at the 7th I just want to stay in that thing. Set me up and say, well, I feel led to give more. Then it's on you. Why don't you double it? If you feel led to give more, then you double it. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. But when you preach like this, to give nothing should not be an option. I could go deeper into my blessings, but everybody can't handle everything that God does for you. So I do more private meetings that I'm able to break down more that the Lord tell me to talk to. Everybody can't know all your business. Joseph taught us that when he told it to his family, they hated him the more. Some people hate on your dream and it hasn't even become your reality yet. And if you can't handle my dream, what you gonna do with me later? Come on, everyone so.
in the building online. Everybody under 20 or 35, I'm staying on y'all. Because y'all, y'all win everything you got. You got to stack that money. Same God that did it for me. Start with just a little something. If you're not saving anything a month, you're out of his will. You're out of his will. You got to put up, I don't care if it's five or ten, you better put something up and then watch the Lord bring the increase. How many of y'all know that every quarter we do the sponsorship envelopes? Next Sunday, we're going to do the sponsorship envelopes. And those envelopes are for those of us that are asking God every three months, we give $100 and say, God, make me a sponsor for kingdom. Next Sunday will be the Sunday that we'll do that. I was asking for the envelopes for some of y'all that you could take it home and that you could pray over your envelopes. We'll do that next Sunday. But right now, I need your breakthrough seat. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet. Y'all praying for me? I had a, a little cough Wednesday. And then I went to tell Bible study Thursday, came home, and I had on a full mask and a COVID test sitting out waiting on me. She in there with a house coat on with a full mask and a COVID test. <laughs> Y'all don't know what I go through. I took the test. Of course I'm negative. I went away to rest up from 12 hour prayer. I'm out in the woods, being bougie, sitting out in the woods with some pajamas on and a house coat, drinking coffee in the cold. I bet I go sit my behind in that house next time. <laughs> but the Lord is my healer. Come on, get your seat ready. If y'all listen to this word, if you go back and listen to it, go back and listen to my Saturday night devotion when I get more into detail. Your job is not your source. Everybody repeat after me, my job is not my source. You're going to see God begin to blow your mind in ways that you have to be prepared for. You're going to stack your money. And the moment you stack, your house is going to come to you. I decree and I declare that some of y'all, your next car, you will pay cash. Everybody that believes that God's going to open the door and show, give them wisdom on how to pay their house off. Open your mouth and declare, my house is paid off. If you see that, repeat after me. I'm a tithe and a giver. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. I am living and Ephesians 3.20, how long are you going to live it? For the rest of my life.